Hello, this is uh, chapter 18, question 33. Uh, it's called an outlier's effect. It says, our bodies have a natural electrical field that is known to help wounds heal. Does changing the field strength slow healing? A series of experiments with newts, uh, newts are little lizard-like creatures, by the way, um, investigated this question. In one experiment, the two hind limbs of 12 newts were assigned at random to either experimental or control groups. This is the mass pairs design. The electrical field in the experimental limbs was reduced to zero by applying a voltage. The control limbs were left alone. Here are the rates at which the new cells closed the razor cut in each limb in micrometers per hour. So we have 12 newts in our data. Um, and uh, let's, let's draw a little picture of what's going on here. So here, here we have our, our, our newts. Here's a, here's a picture of a newt. Okay, here's the hind limbs. I know here's the tail. Okay, so it kind of, it kind of looks like this. Here, here's our here's our newt. Okay, now, um, so what the researchers did was they took a razor, poor little fellas, and they 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 cut the leg of of the newt on the right hand side, uh, and then they cut the leg or the arm. It's just limbs of the other side. Now one of these uh, sides had some sort of electrical field um, maybe it was this side it was randomly chosen for each newt so let's say this has some this side has some sort of electrical field that's the experimental side the, that's called the experimental limb that has the electrical field and then we have the control which so this this limb nothing done nothing done to it it's just let it heal on its own and then they just measured how fast does it heal and does the the question here is do did the limbs that have this electrical field um, applied to it did it quicken the the healing process all right so let's let's take a look at the at the raw data here um, back to the here it is so um, let's do a quick scan first of all so um, the smaller the number uh, um, the slower it healed because it says here's the rates so so the, the higher the number the faster it's healing in micrometers per hour so first newt the control limb is healing faster than the experimental limb second newt the control limb is healing faster third healing faster healing faster so it looks like well here newt number six they're about the same newt number seven the experimental limb is healing faster Wow, look at look at newt number eight. Uh, control limb 56 versus 25. That's much, much faster there. 33, 20, that's pretty close. 20, 23, experimental, faster. These are about the same control limbs. So it looks to me, actually, the control limb is actually, in general, um, healing faster than the experimental limb does. Um, so uh, so anyway, um, that that's just a preliminary judgment here. Uh, so part part A, make a stem plot of the differences between the limbs of the same newt. Uh, this is the high outlier. Uh, how, oh, there is a high outlier. All right. So first of all, I don't care about the rates themselves so much. It says it's a matched pairs design. Where it says that somewhere in the question it says it's, it's, a, it's a matched pairs design. Here we go. This is the matched pairs design. So anytime you have matched pairs design, you subtract the results from each from each of the pairs and then we analyze the differences so I downloaded the data here it is we have the experimental limbs we have the control limbs um, what do you subtract from what um, it doesn't really matter um, I'll just do experiment minus control okay so that'll just be um, cell B2 minus cell C2 um, you can do this with a calculator. I'm just using Excel just to make it easy. Okay, let's copy that down. Okay, so when I do experiment minus control, I'm seeing mostly negative numbers. Um, so what does a negative mean? It's, it's important to keep in mind what the negative means. So negative means, for example, the first, the first newt, a negative 8 means the control group is faster. Control is, I'll just say, uh, greater. 
Okay, then a positive means that the experimental limb is greater, in other words, faster. Okay, now um, we have an outlier right here. Newt number eight is an outlier. Um, and yes, you, you can do the interquartile range, et cetera, et cetera, to figure out the outlier. But in this case, it's, it's pretty obvious it's an outlier here. It's, it's three times greater than almost all the rest of the data here. So um, I'll just label that there, outlier. Okay, so first of all, um, uh, if you remember the conditions for, um, here's back to our, our newt here. So uh, our, our conditions for using the t-distribution, if n is less than 15, and in this case, n equals 12, so certainly it's, it's a very small sample, we should have a unimodal and symmetric um, distribution. Well, it's... Um, it's certainly not symmetric. If you have an outlier, there's no way it's going to be symmetric. Uh, for part A, it says to make a, a stem plot. Um, but already I can see I shouldn't be using the T distribution here. I don't have a unimodal symmetric distribution. But let's go ahead and do what, what they're asking us to in this problem. So let's let's go back to our, our data here. Um, I can make this a little bit smaller. Okay, now how do you make a, a stem plot with Let's make both of our screens smaller here. Hold on here. What happened to my, here it is. Okay, I almost made it way too small there. Okay, so how do you make a stem plot with negative numbers? Um, well, uh, you can just, uh, on your, the stem part. Okay, here we go. So I'm ready for, so um, I can see it ranges from negative 31 to positive 13. So I can just do this. Uh, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Um, you could say negative 0. It's kind of, it seems kind of weird, but it works. And then positive 0, positive 1. Okay, there's my stems. And then I've got negative 8, which would mean negative 08. Negative 10, which is negative 10, negative 12, negative 9, negative 11, negative 1, that'd be negative 01, positive 6, negative 31, negative 5, positive 13, negative 2, that'd be uh, negative 02, and negative 7. Okay, there's our stem plot. Now, yes, we have an outlier. Um, now, if maybe the outlier is, uh, uh, maybe there's a mistake in the measurement or something. If you can legitimately, here, let's go back to our stem plot here. If you can legitimately toss out the outlier, then we would have a fairly unimodal symmetric distribution. And then we could use the t-distribution. Um, and so in the, in the problem here, it says to do this twice, once with the outlier and once without. The outlier. Let's go back to the original question here. Okay, so part A. It says, make a stem plot. Okay, we did that. Uh, and there's an outlier. Yeah, the, the negative 31. Oh, by the way, uh, a quick comment here. What if I had subtracted the other way around? Uh, back to our raw data here. What if I had done control minus experiment? Then I would have mostly positive numbers, um, but the shape of the histogram would be the same, except I'd have a positive 31 instead of a negative 31. Um, but it would still be skewed. We still have a, a, an outlier. All right, so we're done with part A. Part B. Okay, it says, a good way to judge the effect of an outlier is to do your analysis twice. Uh, once, great. My, my workload has just doubled here. So <laughs> instead of having to do a hypothesis once, I got to do it twice now. Once with the outlier and second time without it. Carry out two tests to see if the mean healing rate is significantly lower in the experimental limbs. One test including all 12 newts and the other that omits the outlier. What are the test statistics and their p-values? And what, and does the outlier have a strong influence on your conclusion? Okay, so the question here is, is the healing rate uh, significantly lower in the experimental limbs? 
All right, so um, that is going to be the question. Um, and uh, in part two of this video, we'll actually carry out the hypothesis tests.